What's up YouTube? Today we're going to take a look at lead code problem number 1083, sales analysis 2. This one is marked as easy, let's get into it. So this one got an upvote from me. It also uses the tables product and sales, which we know from sales analysis part 1. And our task is to write an SQL query that reports the buyers who have bought S8 but not iPhone. Probably refers to Galaxy, Samsung Galaxy S8. Note that S8 and iPhone are products present in the product table. Query result format should be the following. Just buy ID of buyers that bought an S8 but didn't buy an iPhone. Let's get into it. So taking a look at the tables, we have product and sales. Product contains product information while sales contains sales numbers. And we only have product ID in sales, which is just an integer, one for S8, three for iPhone. So we probably have to use the product table as well to kind of look up the product name for S8 or iPhone. You could argue to just use product ID directly using one for S8 and three for iPhone. But what if there was a change in the product table and the IDs change? Maybe they don't match the product name. Maybe it was overwritten and S8 Plus is now product ID 1 and S8 is another one or has been removed. So we should join just for best practice and that's what we're going to do here. So let's select buyer ID because that's what we should output. From product joining sales on product ID, that is the primary key, which is given in the problem statement. So product.product .product ID should be sales of product ID. And that should allow us to look up sales in terms of product name. Okay. And now our restriction is to only output buyers who bought an S8 but not an iPhone. Okay, so once again we're going to use having and for that we're going to group by buyer ID to be able to calculate sales per buyer and not for the entire table or all buyers. And we're using having here to calculate how many devices of each kind they bought. So in here we're going to use an if statement, case, when, then. In MySQL you actually don't have to write them out, but it would be something like case, when, or you could write them out actually. So case, when, product name is S8, right? We want to make sure they bought an S8 at least one. Uh, one product name is S8, then we count it as one, else a zero, end. And that should be that number because we're summing that up. If they bought an S8, that would be one row in the table and that value would become one for that row. And if we sum that up, all of these rows, if there are three rows for them buying an S8, then the total count would be three. We just want to make sure it's higher than zero so that they bought at least one S8. And if they bought four or five or 10, we don't care. At least they, they must have bought at least one. So what do we get if we run that? We get a buyer ID, we get a buyer ID for one, and three as an output, we only expect one as an output. That's because three also bought an iPhone, probably, right? So we have sales for buy ID three here, and they bought product ID three, which is iPhone. So we don't want them in here. We need to get rid of them, but our, our code works, I would just Shorten that a bit, shorten that a bit by just having that log logical statement of product name is S8. If that is true, it's going to evaluate to true. 
if that's false, it's going to evaluate to false. And true and false are also encoded as 1 or 0. And if we're using sum on that truth statements, or truth values, it's going to sum up the number of truth. Or yeah, Basically, it does the same thing because it automatically assigns 1 to true values, which we just did using the case when, then, and that long thing. So if we run that again, we should get the same output but it's way shorter that way and we're going to use that same syntax for the iPhone condition. So Now we made sure they bought at least an S8 and now we want to make sure they didn't buy an iPhone. So we're going to use AND and just check the same way for iPhone. So this is also going to count up the rows of cells we have for iPhone. And that should be exactly zero, meaning they didn't buy an iPhone. And it's actually going to go through all rows and decide whether that is true or false. So we're going to get zero here, no null values, that should work. And let's run that and see if we have any typos. We don't, which is perfect. Let's submit that to get an accepted solution. And that's pretty much it for that problem. Once again, we had to use having to sum that up. And that technique of using sum on if statements or case statements is very common for lead code in case you need to sum up the number of times something occurred. And when you're checking for specific values like S8 and iPhone and want uh, a result just for these and not for, for all phones, we don't care about the G4 here. Um, because if we did, we could probably just do a group by maybe. And yeah. But we want that specific question answered of people who bought an S8 but not an iPhone and that's the solution for that. I'm also going to go through product sales or sales analysis 3 and sales analysis 1. They're all on this channel and I'm going through all lead code database problems. I also have a place for that which I'm going to link down below and I'll hopefully see you guys next time. You can always subscribe to see more of these videos in your feed and keep studying these lead code questions. See you all next time.